Welcome to Movies, Films, and Flicks. I am Mark Hoffmeyer, and joining me is someone who knows just as much about my dumb data as I do. It's my wife, Megan Hoffmeyer. Hello. So you've been you've been working on this with me since day one. You've designed the graphics for a lot of these. You've sat in front of a TV, or you've done other things while I'm staring at the TV, analyzing Nicolas Cage running around in a bear suit. Or taking pictures of the TV screen with your phone, or... <laughs> Various other things. And so I gave you an option because we're doing this new series and I gave you an option to kind of pick a couple movies that you're going to join me for. And the first one was Zara the Assistant's Death in Jurassic World. What made you pick this one? Uh, I really like Katie McGrath. She's from Supergirl, which I just always, I think we enjoy her accent, the way it slips in and out of American to Irish. We've big fans of Ireland. We watched some Christmas movies. Princess movie. for Christmas. There you go. With her and Outlander. And then it's always fun to see her pop up in other things. Uh, she was in that King Arthur with Charlie Hunnam. She was just a tiny role where she got, oh, and she was, I watched Merlin for a long time. So she was in all of that TV series, which is a lot of fun for all your random British actors. And you and I watch this movie together, Jurassic World. I guess I picked this one because I don't know if you were familiar with this, but her death is actually pretty famous in the internet of sphere. A lot of people are saying how brutal it was. She I is, seem to remember that. She was like the first woman to be killed in a Jurassic Park movie. And her death isn't just getting bitten or eaten when she's sitting on the toilet, like in Jurassic <laughs> Park or... <laughs> Or, you know, having a great line saying clever girl to two raptors. Or being like stupid, P stupid Peter Stormare in the second Jurassic Park where he goes to take a pee. And then he gets lost and tiny dinosaurs murder him. This movie, she's the assistant to Bryce Dallas Howard's character. And she's forced to watch these two kids that it's not part of her job. She's the assistant. She's not a babysitter. I mean, real brats, right? Yeah. And throughout this day, they let an Indominus Rex out, right? Because they don't know that it can camouflage itself. The kids run away. And it all leads to her getting picked up by one pterosaur, dropped by that pterosaur, picked up by another pterosaur, dropped into the water, then grabbed by another pterosaur, lifted out of the water, and then eaten by a mosasaur. It's a pretty epic death considering no one in the movie seems to notice. It's going like only the audience is in on this death. Yeah, the two kids, they look shocked for a little bit. They're like, let's get out of here. She's just the assistant. Yeah, Bryce never asks, what happened to Zara? Yeah, Zara just gets wiped out and... Uh, like, I guess this started with a question for me, and that is, what are the odds that Zara, the assistant, would be picked up by two pterosaurs, dumped into a massive lagoon, and swallowed whole by a mosasaurus while at Jurassic World? So how'd you go about coming up with probability for this? Well, this one's really tough because I wasted a lot of time analyzing <laughs> the park. I found maps, and I found lay Apparently, there's a lot of maps. There's video games. And so I tried to lay out the entire park, mm -hmm. uh, and it got really complicated because I wanted to know... Pretty much everything that happened that day. Distance between things. Exactly. And, and how the timing worked out and how this... But then I realized that was insane because I also <laughs> included like divorce rates. Because those kids' parents got divorced. We're getting divorced. So then mm -hmm. they had to go to their, their aunt. The square mileage of the park. Aviary destruction. And like general stupidity. Like what are the odds a scientist wouldn't tell them that they had... The Indominus Rex had what? Gecko DNA? Oh, and yeah. So I got to the point where I was at about 1 in 300 billion. That was too much. That just felt like... like I, Way too much. Yeah, and so I kind of went and I talked to some people who were smarter than me about kind of odds. And, and we kind of narrowed it down to a few different things. And then I kind of took it home. So I really narrowed it down. Because, well, I don't know, 1 in 300 billion. That's just like... I felt like I made something up. So I started with a few things. I said, Jurassic Park had been open for 10 years. Right, all year round, three three thousand six hundred fifty days, and they never had an animal escape. So that's one and three thousand six hundred fifty. I was really surprised by that ten years thing. I mean, I guess we haven't watched this movie in a while, but ten years it felt very um like they had just opened it when you are watching this movie. Oh, for sure, and they're they're hanging in there in ten years. I mean, they're staying busy, but they've never had an animal escape. So <laughs> just this one terrible day, yeah, where she's looking after two children. Normally, she would have been fine. Uh, the next is, I put, according to park numbers, there were 21,216 guests at the park. I saw that on a screen, which is kind of cool that yeah, they just gave neat. you that. Yeah, so oh, is I, that where Jake Johnson is sort of in the, the computer lab? Yeah, you see that in there. I love when he, at the end, when he tries and to go And he has the, the vintage shirt on. Yeah, I love that. I guess that there were 150 pterosaurs and other flying beasts, because there were some big little that escaped when the Indominus Rex and helicopter crashed, crashed into the aviary. 
So let's say one in three of the flying beasts were big enough to pick up one of the guests. Mm -hmm. So I just put 50 and then that, you know, 50 to 21,216. And then if you narrow that down, that's one in 424, right? So I just narrowed down the math to make it a little bit easier. And then I put the majority of the guests had been pushed into the front area of the park near the Morsosaurus cage where the Indominus got eaten, which was pretty cool. It was a very large area and I'm guessing half of the people were close to the lagoon because that's where they were all loaded up. Remember mm -hmm. Jimmy Buffett was double fisting margaritas? Oh, that's right. Yeah. And so that's where everybody was. So I guess that, you know, that's one and two. So I'm saying half the people were next to that lagoon where she got grabbed. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, and it's the entrance, right? Yeah. So that's probably where they're, if they're fleeing, they're trying to get to their transportation their what yeah. water shuttle of finish some off sort. some margies and then we had if a large pterosaur attacked you so if you're one of those people in there that gets attacked by a pterosaur the odds of it flying off with you alive or able to fight would be about one in two because i'll go for it i was thinking about it when i watched this clip again and it's like watching one of those uh final destination movies like the near misses because the thing doesn't appear at least you know, in the world of Jurassic World, to have crazy teeth. So it just sort of picks her up and it's squishing her, but she's not, you know, chomped through with teeth. It could technically spear her almost like a swordfish. Doesn't do that. It's just kind of holding her in its beak. So she's sort of okay until the point where it drops her in the water. Even when it picks her up again, it's just when the Mosasaur gets her. So if they had stayed away from the water, she actually might have been okay. And yeah, and it's, yeah, she, well, yeah. And also what's also nuts, she's picked up by a pterosaur. She's dropped. Mm -hmm. so midair she, she has that motion of going down and another bigger one grabs her mm -hmm. so the odds of that make it even more astronomical uh she might have fallen and maybe broken some bones right yeah well, she, but you broke know. a few ribs yeah exactly rupture a spleen and i mean worst case crack skull but she's not eaten by a giant yeah, dinosaur exactly. while screaming still alive yeah <laughs> So, and also they, you know, the, I, there was a pterosaur that was like mauling a guy with its claws Ooh. in the background. So that could have happened to her, which would have been equally as terrible. Mm -hmm. uh, then I put, after being grabbed by a pterosaur, the odds of it, of you flying, fighting back would be one and two. So while you're, so the thing, it grabbed, its claws grabbed her by the feet. And so like she didn't really have much of a chance of fighting off, but maybe mm -hmm. if it had your arm, you could swing. So I said one and two. And then if you were picked up close to the water, you'd have a one and two chance of being dropped into the water. I mean, horrible. Yeah, I mean, the odds are clearly stacked against her. If it's uh, if it's what? What is your final number? One in 24.7 million or something? Yeah, so I put one in 24,761,600. It was just not her day. I mean, <laughs> really. How did the thing... How did the pterosaur single her out? I mean, she's in the middle of a crowded area. Think, you know, ports of call at... Islands of Adventure in Orlando. There's always a ton of people there going to uh, shops and restaurants. How did it pick her? Was it her shiny hair? Was it that little iPad she's carrying? What was it that made it choose her? She, What I think helped is she was perfectly squared up to the thing. Mm. So was able to get both claws onto her <laughs> shoulders and just lift her up. Oh, okay. Maybe if she was sideways, it wouldn't have been able to... Or if she had been, like, ducking and running. She turned... Yeah, she, yeah, if she was running away, it could have grabbed her. But I think if she was sideways, she was fine. And again, this would be the kid's fault. Because she's standing up, looking for them, calling out to them. Yeah, and they say, you know, she... You could maybe say she was coming across as a little stern. But she's like, why are you standing there? And then, boom, she gets grabbed away. So she's trying to... She's like this assistant who's wearing heels, by the way, much like Bryce Dallas Howard. Mm -hmm. She's staying with these children. She's trying to get them moving. And in the process, she squares up perfectly for a, a massive pterosaur to grab her, mm -hmm. which somehow drops her and is picked up by another. These pterosaurs, I mean, is she heavy? Because when it drops her, it doesn't really look like she's that heavy to the thing. It just drops her in there. It didn't do it on purpose. No, no. It definitely looks like she got dropped. Yeah. So between all but that. But I mean, there was a lot of chaos going on. There's bird yeah. things everywhere and there's people ducking and diving and. It's thinking freedom, right? rogue other dinosaurs all over the park and so i think the one in 24 million 24.7 million is a pretty good estimate for so where we I came think from that's fair i mean you being the one person that they picked up seems extremely unlikely but it was that was her day i just kind of as soon as i saw that number as opposed to the one in 300 billion mm -hmm. it felt right yeah i know it felt good to me and then when i unleashed this onto you know, Reddit and on my site, there weren't too many people who were were angry about it because I didn't try to phrase it as I didn't want to be a hate factory just mm -hmm. saying this movie stinks, this and that. I just wanted to do the odds. The thing is, what I like about this is that there's no real answer. But if the math is correct and you and it makes sense, mm -hmm. so this 
made sense to me, and it also made me laugh. Oh, no, it's definitely hilarious. It's almost a comedy of errors that ends in a woman getting killed by two dinosaurs. She gets obliterated. Swallowed whole. Obliterated. And she's shriek like, the, the, her yelling. Yeah, she really is. I thought about uh, joining today instead of saying hi as, ah, <laughs> you know, to imitate the character in the movie. I mean, she was screaming. Yeah, it's really awful. And then that one shot you have on your post where she's holding a little sign up when she greets the kids and they're supposed to find her, you know, like an airport limo sort of sign. It says their names on it. She's got this massive engagement or wedding ring, they never really say, on her hand. So, I mean, she's got someone at home who's waiting for her. She's never coming home. She seems very capable. She seems well-dressed. I really liked her ensemble that day. And uh, there's a very funny cracked article that says she's the hero. She's reading uh, Jeff Goldblum's book in the movie. Mm-hmm. Well, so she's, they try to make her a bad guy a little bit because she's talking about her fiancé not having a bachelor party on the phone during one scene. Mm. And then she acts grumpy when she has to watch the kids. But she, all right, So she's the assistant to Bryce Dallas Howard, who basically runs the park. Yeah, so you would think an assistant to that person. I mean, that's a pretty high-level role. It's not a coffee getter. Well, it's not a babysitter. That got thrown on her because of Bryce Dallas Howard sort of not wanting to do that. And it led to to that. And it was kind of crazy. I really went through everything. So, you know, she's forced to look after him. They leave her. They run away from her immediately. And then the Domia, and then the kids steal the car. Oh, yeah. And then they're not, they take that bubble too far. So mm-hmm. pretty much everything that happens in this movie leads toward, towards poor Zara's death. And I just wanted to cover the odds on that. And I was pretty happy with it. Like, one in 27 million? I don't know. I think you can make a case for those children being the true villains of this movie. Yeah, well, I, th- I just think the scientists who didn't tell them... Like, if you're a scientist in Jurassic World, you don't you don't want to tell everything that's in this dinosaur because you want to bring fans in, right? You want mm-hmm. you don't you think the T-Rex is getting stale. Yeah. But at least tell people, hey... This thing can blend into plants. <laughs> it's got some potentially dangerous qualities. You, If you don't see it in the cage, it's still in there. All right? Don't open the doors and let it murder people. And then don't send out 10 people with taser guns to try to take it down. Yeah, that's, it just doesn't seem like a great decision. But but this was fun, though. This data post for me, I, I it's kind of amazing how much time I spent on it in the beginning. I don't know if you remember. I, was, I watched the entire movie. Mm-hmm. I, I did a layout of the entire park. But then it just felt silly to me. So then I really had fun. This is one of the rare times where I've just sort of scaled back on this data piece. And I feel like it was better for it. Yeah, I really like uh, the breakdown of the probability and then your list of things that led to her death. That was all mostly other people's. Oh, it was all other people's fault. I feel terrible for Zara and I'm glad I wrote this piece. It would've, I mean, that she should have taken a PTO day, honestly, that day. And I just want to say, uh, before we get out of here, a, th- a special thanks to you, Megan, for joining me. And a special thanks to John Levengood, who after I was beating my head on my desk, I called him up and we sort of narrowed it down to a few things. And I was able to come up with these odds. But this one was tough. It was fun to do. And I thought it would be, a- I thought this would be a lot ch- like easier for me to do. But it was, it was one of the harder ones. I don't know. Given her impact on the overall movie and the type of attention it received, I think she warrants a a slight memorialization post credits. Uh, yeah, for Zara. Yeah, or even you know a little after the credit scene. That's funny. So for me, Mark Hoffmeyer for and Megan Hoffmeyer and Zara. This is movie so for Zara. <laughs> Talking about our dumb data. We'll see you in the next one.